Hello and welcome back to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now, it is our first report for 2021. Now, this week we're going to look at cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, and then we're going to get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading, along with answering all of your questions and looking at stocks for you. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Now, remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show tomorrow night. We stream this show every Tuesday live between 7 and 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favourite stocks and answer all of your most burning questions. The events of the last two years has created a perfect environment for the growth of speculative investments, with cryptocurrencies topping the list. That said, as individuals are opting to work from home, it has meant that they have more free time, or at least more flexible time, which has resulted in many chasing other income sources with the stock market being the easiest and most attractive. However, far too many are relying on chat forums or watching YouTube videos to get their next hot tip, and I don't need to remind you how this usually plays out. Whilst cryptocurrencies have boomed with a number of coin offerings, now non-fungible tokens have also become popular. Nevertheless, when it comes to investing, it is important to consider whether the investment meets a number of sound risk criteria regardless of the market. Otherwise, you're just gambling with your money. Now, sadly, this is what has unfolded for a lot of individuals over the last two years, resulting in ASIC recently launching a crackdown on the ramping of stocks to unsuspecting investors. Now, unfortunately, these same practices are also prevalent with crypto and coin offerings. To reinforce the point of how speculative coin offerings can be, I was recently invited to invest in a coin offering that was listing at around 55 cents. Today it's trading at a fraction of a cent and whilst they tried to ramp the coin, which meant I could have made some really good money, the risk of investing in the first place was just too high. Remember, this market is not regulated, so you are taking some serious risks with your money. Even when it comes to Bitcoin, where the majority believe they can't lose, it's not as exciting as what you might think. Now, would it surprise you to know that anyone who invested in Bitcoin in February of last year would be losing or breaking even today. Yet, if you'd invested in January of last year, you might be sitting on around a 30% profit today. That said, Bitcoin does look weak and is likely to fall further in the coming weeks and or months. So it's likely that any profits made in the last 12 months will be eroded. Therefore, even with the largest cryptocurrency, the buy and forget strategy, is not the best approach. Investors need to be informed and educated to manage their risk regardless of the investment. Now it's time we take a look at the market and as usual, we'll start with what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. The best performing sectors included materials and that was up 4.67% and this was followed by energy up 4.1% and utilities that was up 3.57%. The worst performing sectors included consumer staples down 5.54%, followed by information technology down 4.64% and consumer discretionary that was down 4.53%. The best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included AGL and that was up 18.95%, followed by mineral resources up 11.13% and Woodside that was up 9.3%. The worst performing stocks included Reese and that was down 11.2%, followed by Domino's Pizza down 10.55% and Sonic Healthcare that was down 8.99%. Now before we get into taking a look at the charts, remember if you want to understand the stock market and have more control over your trading, then you can get a copy of my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20% for free. All you have to do, pay the shipping. To get your copy, visit our website wealthwithin.com.au or give us a call on 1300 858 272. Now moving on, what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. 
Well, I do hope you had a fantastic holiday season, best Christmas, New Year's Eve, and you've set all those New Year's resolutions for your investing and, and where you want your wealth to be in 12 months' time. So I do hope you've taken some of the time to do that. I know I always do a reset at this time of year and plan out what I'm doing for the year and what my goals are for the year. So it is a really, really good time to clear that space in your head from work and all the things that are going on around you and actually make sure that what happens in the coming year is really what you want to happen rather than what just happens to you. I hope that sort of makes sense. But it's interesting, the Australian stock market, what it's been doing over the last month since my last report, I think my last report was around about the 8th of December, but let's go into the charts and we'll show you exactly what's going on and why I don't think our market is that bullish at the moment. But looking at the charts, these are the same charts you would have seen last year. Uh, the left side is the monthly chart, the right side is the weekly chart as I normally do. Now, I'm just going to bring up the monthly chart for a minute and have a little bit of a look at that. And you can see here, this is the current month, this is January there, and you can see there we're currently closing at 771. 7.1 points. But what is interesting to me, now we made a new all-time high in January. That was the other thing that I, I, I forgot to just mention. A new, new all-time high of 7956.3. Now you think, wow, we've made a new all-time high in January. The market's bullish. Everything should be rosy for 2022. And now I know there's one of those old sayings that says if you have a bullish January, then the rest of the year is going to be bullish. And whilst that has some truth to it, like a lot of um, those sayings have some sort of truth to it, it's not always the case. So we can't bet on that. What I want you to show you here is I'm going to bring out my crosshair and look at where the, they always say there's an old saying. Another old saying is the amateurs open the market and the professionals close the market. And that one I really, really do believe in. Now you're looking at here is if you look at the monthly close here, the highest monthly close, if, if you see there, that is August last year. And you can see there across to the right, using that horizontal line, you can't see one, one of those little notches out that side, that's the close of the month. And you can see here, close lower here, close lower here, close lower there. And you can see here currently we're closing down here. So. We haven't had a higher close on our market on, on any month since August last year. So we've got one, two, three, four months, four and a half months we haven't closed higher than what we did in August last year. So literally the market is going pretty much nowhere. Now let me just turn that off and if I, we have a look at where the market is, where's my little, where it is, sorry that's my tool I want. So if we look at where the market was to where it is today, we're talking about one, roughly 1.3, 2% roughly I think it is around difference between what it closed in August to what it's closing now. And so the market is technically down over that period of time. Now you can look at some of these closes, that was, there's one, two, three, all really, really close together. That was just showing a whole lot of indecision. Then obviously December, there we had a big strong month closing really, really high. January started off early, took off like a rocket and has come right back down again. So it'll be interesting to see where January finishes up. To see where that finishes up sort of within this price range here. So we've got a close there um, in July, sorry, September at 7.629. October was 7.639. In November, we had 7.583, so a bit lower. So it'll be interesting to see if it gets below that 7,600 um, 7, points sort of in that sort of area with the a January close. So right now, it is not looking super, super bullish. That's why you need to be really careful with your stock selection at the moment. I know a lot of people are still tending to go for those lower cap, low end stocks, hoping to get it rich make a quick buck out of those, and they still are more fraught with danger often. You're going to get that, they're going to be quite hit and miss, and I've had a lot of emails over the last sort of couple of months with people struggling with some of those stocks. Let's now look at the weekly chart just to sort of have a bit of a look to give us an indication. Now, I don't have any tools on this. I'm trying to keep today really, really, really clean in terms of what I've got on the chart. In fact, I put almost nothing on these charts ever in this YouTube video just to make sure that people that are new to the market, more investors and people that don't necessarily understand technical, technical analysis can really see the chart. And, and if you're a technical analyst, that's great. And if you put a lot of tools on your charts and a lot of indicators on your charts, that's great that that's what you want to do. Really, the thing is, these bars will tell you everything that's going on in this market or, or in, indeed in the stock, and you really do need to look at these in isolation. Without stuff on it, it's, it's sort of the, a lot of the indicators will distract you from what's really, really, really going on. And what we can see here is we say, look at the different colors. We see green, we see red, and we see blue. Green basically is closing up from where it opened, so the open low, close high. Red 
is it closed higher and closed uh, open higher and closed lower blue means it it's um, it's it's traded higher and lower than the previous bar so it's what we call an outside bar but you can see when you look at just looking at colors is there more green or more red or more blue it's sort of really balanced isn't it here so green red more red a bit more green here, a bit more red there, a little bit more blue here. So this is showing a lot of indecision in our marketplace. But you can see even on a weekly basis, the highest weekly close we've got is way back in September last year. And I'll put my crosser on just to show you. There's my, our weekly close. There hasn't been a close above that point since 3rd of September last year. Let's just show you how much indecision in our market. And here was last the, the week that we had that all-time high, the January 7th. Open up, traded right up, came back right back down. Didn't know where it was going and it closed near where it opened for the week. So it is interesting. I expect we're probably going to see some a few weeks down here at the moment. Be interesting to see whether the market goes below that low there of 7529. And, and it'd be more interesting to see if it goes below that 7446. If it does, then we might be in for a bit of a fall. Because if we go back right back to the start of this COVID um, bullish trend, back from March 2020. Now, you know, we are in January, so we're nearly two years along from that. Um, we haven't had any major pullbacks. We've had a sideways move here, a sideways move there, and a sideways move here. Now, if I use some uh, this, uh, another tool, we can see that sideways move was about 19 weeks. And if we use the same tool again and we go, that sideways move was around, you know, it was about 18 weeks, 19 weeks. And if we use this sideways tool, we see it's a little bit longer. So it's interesting to see the sideways moves a little bit longer through here. But each one of those, we really haven't had any major pullbacks. Now, normal market will pull back somewhere between 8 and 12 percent quite regularly. And uh, it'll normally do 5 to 8 percent at least once or twice a year and 12 percent. And, um, you know, probably every couple of years and then more than that um, every four years. So we get some larger moves. Now, we're nearly two years down the track and we haven't had any sort of major, major pullback. And I would be expecting we should be having some sort of pullback and it may happen right through into March. And so right now we just need to be a little bit more careful about what we're doing on the stock market, our decisions about what stocks we are buying. Don't chase stocks. Uh, and I know a lot of people try and buy yesterday's return. And what I mean by that is a lot of people will see what's already been running hot and then try and jump on it as if they're jumping onto the momentum. But uh, quite often what we find, and as we showed you last year, a lot of people are jumping uh, at the top of, the, uh, of a run on a stock only for it to start to fall away and I've seen a lot of people do that they jump in way too late and then all of a sudden they, they might get a little bit of a gain for a while and the stock falls over and goes sideways and then down uh, and then they end up in a loss position and then they're emailing me saying I bought this stock at this it went to that it come now down to this what should I do to me that question should have been answered before you even buy if you don't uh, know the answer to why I should hold why I should sell before you buy then you probably shouldn't be buying because Again, you're taking a lot more risk. But uh, look, I think this year is going to be good. I think we will have a bullish year this year on our stock market. I don't think it's going to be overly bullish. I think um, for memory, I think our market did about 14% last year. Um, don't quote me on that one. Um, I'm still getting my head around some of the stuff. I've been having a look at the market just the last day or so. But I think we should have a bullish market. I think there are some good stocks. But if you watch our show tomorrow night, our live stream tomorrow night with Janine and I, we'll get stuck into the market a lot more, uh, looking at different areas of the market and maybe give you some hints on where you could be putting your money. All right, that's my take on the All Lord News Index. Now it's time to get into your questions. Now, given this report is the first report for the year, uh, we don't have many questions or should I say ones that are recent and really relative to today's market. So I first wanted to touch on the stocks AGL, Mineral Resources and Woodside as these stocks were in the top performing stocks last week. And I know there's a lot of, um, or sorry, they're top of mind for a lot of people, uh, those two stocks, or specifically AGL because it's gone up so much over the last couple of weeks. So I know that would probably be a question on a lot of people's minds and I would expect you're going to be asking for it on the bottom of this video but I'm going to answer it beforehand so how's that so I'm in front of your questions but let's go and look at the charts of AGL now AGL is on the screen at the moment and the monthly charts on the left and the weekly chart is on the right now I'm just going to bring up the monthly chart and just show you how much it's actually gone up 
So if we're looking at from that low back in November, I'll just put my lock on so I can show you. So I had a low there in November and up till now it's done 46.47%. Most of it, you know, obviously we've had a big rise so far this month. And that's what I'm saying is a lot of people will start to jump on them after they've already started to move. And you can see this big volume through here back in September. So somebody, and that was right near the low there at $5.22. This low here is at $5.26. So somebody was buying big there. Somebody is buying big there and in there. Now look at the volume so far for January, even though it's gone up. So a lot of big money started going into uh, AGL really, really early down in. That's what I'm saying a little bit earlier. The big money, the, the, the professionals buy, you know, they really do know what they're doing. They tend to buy before the amateurs, if that makes sense. Um, they take the runs up and then they let the amateurs take more of the risk and they're getting out before the markets peak and let the amateurs take the, that risk on top of that. So when you're looking at a professional, your job really is to be a risk manager and take the lowest risk possible at any one time. But it is quite interesting how much this has actually moved over the last couple of months. And I will look at the weekly chart in a second for you just to show you that. But I just wanted to show you what's happened so far this month. So since it closed um, in December, it's up 21.6% six percent this month alone now let's go down into the weekly chart to show you now these are high sort of high risk times unless you are really 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 in the know now what i would suspect there's a lot of buying coming through here but i would expect that we've now seen one two three four five six seven weeks up it wouldn't surprise me if the next week or two we see selling coming into it so people that got in really really early sell into the momentum that's created through here and then push it right back down because when you're seeing a stock that's fallen for this long long in time now you're looking at this point of view if i go and put down this one here it'll tell me this stock has fallen probably i would say around no not quite 90 percent in price so there's 90 percent in price is 284 and it's as, as we said here it fell down to five dollars odd so it's fallen over 75 percent in price so is this just a move in time where this stock is just having a bit of a breather like some of these times through here or is this going to be the end of the downward move and there's a nice long bull market? And that really hasn't been answered. And this is why I'm saying just be a little bit careful in what you're doing is this could just be some really nice ramping of this stock, people jumping into it, uh, taking it up a little bit, and then people just, and the big end of town just starts selling into it and it drives it right back down below that $5 mark. Right now, it's a little bit too early for me and I know a lot of people are going, but Dale, you could have made 20 odd percent. But yes, it's, it's about risk here. And again, you need to take the lowest risk to get the gain that you want. So what people are doing is jumping in now, hoping it's going to go another 20 or 30%, and then they're speculating on where they've got to get out. Um, and they may be right and they may be wrong, and they might get it right a few times, but they may not get it right. So just be a little bit careful. I'd like to see AGL come back down and really make a higher low than that low there at $5.10. But if it doesn't do that um, over the next few weeks, it could go. It, it could go. I'm not saying it's not going to go higher. I'm just saying the risk to getting into this stock right now is you might be buying in just before it starts to fall over. So just be careful on that one. Let's go have a quick look at Min and Mineral Resources has done so well over the last couple of months. Again, a little bit like AGL, there's your low there at 36.95. It's just made a new all time high. You can see there, we've moved through to 65.84. Previous one was 65.38 on a massive sort of move. This is a bit more of a volatile stock, but you can see it can move sideways for a number of years. There's five years it's sort of moved sideways and down that sideways and down this one was about three years of sideways and down right now it is quite nice and bullish so looking really really good again you would have liked to have been in around that sort of 40 dollar mark but it could be just a little bit too much um, have risen a bit too much don't try and jump in on this because look at that low there uh, in november at 36.95 that's a bit above that one that's 37.17 so that's the low there we had one two three four five six seven eight weeks straight up go back here and look at four see if you can see eight weeks straight up here's one two three four five six seven eight nine here we've got one, two, three, four, five straight up. This one was more than eight weeks straight up. So that was a big move out of 2020. That at the COVID low there in 2020, a massive move there. So my 
I would think if I went back over this, I would say it's probably not going to go up too much more at the moment before it starts to have a few weeks down. If you bought into this early, fantastic. Well done for getting into this. Make sure you protect your downside. But if you're not in min at the moment, I think I'd sit back and wait a little bit just to take a little bit of the air out of the tyres, if that makes sense. Next one here is Woodside. And it's another one I've asked, have been asked about before Christmas and before we had our break and a few people, um, I'm sure would be looking at this stock at the moment, uh, Woodside Petroleum. But you can see here, again, and another stock that's been heavily hit with its all-time high way back in 2008. Pretty much going sideways, quite volatile, and these moves can be quite big moves, and we need to be really careful about what we're trading and how and how we're actually trading it. You can see there's over 60% move there over that period of time. And even this month, from between the close of, of uh, August there through to there, there's 31% in, in one move, and it closed up 19%. Currently, this stock is up since the close in uh, December there, it's up a, around 13%, which you can see there. So it is moving really, really nicely. So just be a little bit careful. Let's go to the weekly chart and have a good look at that. And again, it's really sort of still in that sideways pattern at the moment. Again, I'd like to see, it's only three weeks up, which is good. It could break through that level there of 2564, it may or may not. But you can see it really hasn't, that's its highest close back in January 2021 since way back here um, in February 2020. So um, I'd like to see it break through here, but again, if it does that, it'd probably come back down again, come back down into this pattern uh, before taking off. So I'd keep a, a real good close eye on this. I'd probably prefer this over the other two at the moment, uh, AGL and Mineral Resources. I'd like to see this, you know, Get up a little bit more, maybe another one or two weeks, come back down, find some support and take off again. And it could be a good medium to longer term move. And I think it looks looks a lot better in, in my thoughts. Now, we do have one question today. And this is from Chris. And he asked last year, what about dollar cost averaging when the price is going up? And I thought it was a really good question. Normally, people just mention dollar cost averaging and they just say, well, why don't you like dollar cost averaging? And the reason why we don't like dollar cost averaging, we, Janine and I don't say you can't make money dollar cost averaging because I do get people sending in comments or emails saying, well, I bought this stock at this and it fell to this and then I kept buying all the way down and then and now it's back. I'm back, in, I'm back in profit. What we're saying is if you bought a stock at $10 and it falls to $5, and you kept buying more on the way down, your first your main major purchase was your first one. By the time it gets back to the $10, yes, you've made some money on some of those other purchases on the way down, but generally people don't buy at the bottom. They've bought a couple of times off the top as it comes off five or 10 or 15 or 20%. So most of your money's made when it gets back up to around that $10 or not necessarily most of your money, on the more money on those second and possibly third or even fourth buys that people tend to do. And they go, but I've just made money. So I'm not saying you can't make money. What we're saying is if you have solid rules, you would sell some around 10 or $9 to sell the whole parcel of the shares and come back in and buy it five or $6. And so that period of time where you're waiting for it to get back up to $10, you're making money all of the time and you'll make far more money by the time it gets back up to $10. You've actually compounded your return because if you had 100 shares at $10, in theory, you could buy and sold you could buy, if it's now $5, you could buy twice as many shares for $5, couldn't you? So by the time it gets back up to $10, you've made far more money. So that's one reason, and Janine and I, we don't dollar cost average, we never do, never will, because we have solid rules around exiting stocks. Most people, and I'm not saying the majority of people say they don't know how to sell, which is one of the most important parts of investing and or trading is understanding when to sell. In fact, I'll challenge you, the more you learn how to sell, the more money you will make. The other part about dollar cost averaging we don't like is time value. You're in stocks going down and the time you're in the stocks going down, you can't be in stocks going up or your money can't be in stocks going up. So that's why we also don't like it because the period of time it goes from $10 to $5 could be one week, one month, or 10 years. And quite often it's years like we saw with AGL. You know, you see that stock going down and down and down or even, you know, Woodside. So people keep buying and buying and buying. This is the average people do. Now, Chris's question was about well, what about buying when it's going up? I don't have so much of an issue with uh, dollar cost averaging on when it's going up. I just wouldn't completely can continually increase my risk because the more it goes up, the more it has potential to peak and come down again. So the higher something rises, the more the probability it'll find a peak and, ri and fall away. But the same is the inverse is also correct. The more it falls, the more chance it has of finding a bottom and starting to rise. So just be careful as you're adding to your positions. And generally we never add, like if you put in $10,000, 
in your first position, we don't add another $10,000 because again, you need to look at risk, which is what I was saying about in, in my report a little bit earlier, is that professional, we look at risk all of the time because if you've bought in at $5 and then you buy in another parcel at $6 or $7, if they're at $6 or $7, if it starts to fall away, it's taking profit from the $6 or $7 uh, or taking capital from the six or seven dollar purchase, but it's taking profit from the five dollar purchase. So you're losing your profits from your first purchases if it starts to come down. So there's a balance around that, and it's stuff we teach traders um, in a lot more depth. I'm just trying to keep it really, really simple. But really great question, Chris. So I don't mind buying on the way up or adding what we call adding to positions on the way up. We do teach it, but there's specific ways of teaching it uh, and doing that as a trader. And, and as if you're a long-term buy and hold investor, and let's say you think AG has got a long-term move up over the next 10 years and you buy a little bit more all the time. I don't have a problem with that. If you're a long-term buy and hold investor and you accumulate stocks like BHP or Rio or something, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but it's about your intent. What is your intent? If you're more of a trader, then you'd need to be a lot more careful around that. But thanks, Chris, for sending in your question. I really do appreciate it. And we look forward to getting more questions from all of you for next week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now, if you do have any questions, you're sitting there thinking, I'd like to ask Dale something, then we, all you need to do is two different things. The first one is being, you need to publicly subscribe to our channel, and then you just need to type your question below. It's pretty simple uh, from that point of view. Also give us a big thumbs up to tell us uh, we, you do like the show. Now remember, Right here on this channel, we do these Monday market reports each and every single week. We also do our live stream, as I mentioned, on Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. So I expect to see you tomorrow night on our YouTube live stream. So remember, hit that subscribe button now and click the bell on the right of it so you know when we upload new videos and also go live with our live stream. That's it for me for this week. I'm Dale Gillam. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.